once when I was giving a holiness retreat, the day of the confession, so a woman came to me and she was shivering. She was shivering. She said, no, I cannot go for confession. I am afraid to go for confession. So the reason she said, I am a great sinner. I am a great sinner. Then she shared with me in confidence some of the biggest sins she did. I said, don't worry. The Lord said in Isaiah chapter 1, 15 to 18, even if your sins are crimson red, I shall make it as white as snow. Jesus has come to take away our sins. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Uh -huh. Then she got a courage. When she understood the merciful love, she got a courage to go for a good con for a confession and she could confess that. So we have to confess our sin not by fear. In the sense, oh, if I don't confess, I will go to hell. If I don't confess, God will punish me. It is not that way we should think. We must confess so that his merciful love will wash all our sins. This type of an attitude we have to experience. That is not, that is an experience we receive by meeting Jesus. By understanding the love of God. Let us raise our one hand and praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, praise, Jesus. You, Jesus. praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, another point we have to know is, what is the meaning of the name Jesus? Ah, very good. Everybody shout out. God saves. Maybe you may be thinking, why am I asking these small, small questions? Yes, it is a small question, but the fact is many do not know this answer. We are, from childhood onwards, we are Christians, we are going to church, we are praying, we are doing everything. But we still sometimes do not know what is the meaning or what is he doing? What Jesus is doing for us? So therefore, we have to be very clear. The name Jesus means God saves. God saves. In this one name, there are two, or there are two elements. First is his identity. And second is his mission. In identity, Jesus is, Jesus is, Jesus is, louder, Jesus is, in identity, Jesus is God. You know, okay, in mission, he is, what is his mission? Salvation. I was in Austria when Pope came there in Austria in the month of September. How boldly, how strongly he said, he is the only God. Whom every human being in fact is searching. Only when they find him, their searching of their soul will complete. And he said, but... We don't say this, or when we say this, we are not hurting any religious sentiment of any other people. But we are telling the, we are telling the truth. We have to say the truth. He is the only God. We are forced to say this truth because this truth, Jesus himself possessed us. It is he who is speaking through us. You got the point? Jesus, who is the truth, has already 
possessed us. I use this language because we always say he's a demon possessed. <laughs> that fellow is possessed. That fellow is possessed. But evil spirit, we always say, oh, don't go to that house. That man is possessed, okay? Okay, but who are we? We are possessed by Jesus. Means you are not your own. Are you your own? <laughs> big, big question, say. <laughs> Very difficult to answer quickly. But I am asking this question. It is a brainstorming. Are you your own? Already we heard God has created us with a purpose. We are not our own. It's very difficult. See, nobody is able to answer this. These are the modern problems. These are the modern problems. We are in a stage that we are not able to know our maker. We are not able to understand our maker. Our maker. Our maker. God is our maker. He created us. We belong to him. We, he is, we are his possession. We are his possession. Not even one hair of you, you can make black and white. No. <laughs> Even your hairs are counted, counted. Certain, certain such strong convictions we have to receive, then only we can climb on the ladder of the truth. This is the truth that when you recognize if you recognize, if you accept that I do not belong to me, I belong to Jesus. It's very good thinking. Then the second step is, if I belong to Jesus, if I belong to God, all my possessions, all what I have is also belong to? Oh, then what am I? I am nothing. I am nothing. If you say that, then you are in heaven. Then you are already in heaven. Otherwise, you are like a paperweight, full of weight, weight of a building, weight of the land, weight of the gold, weight of everything. You cannot easily go to heaven. You have to totally understand this mystery. God, you are a possession of God. God has created us. And you belong to God. Okay, coming to the point. So, when Holy Father said, He is the only God. That is the truth. Many a time, people are in big, big convulsive habits. We know so many people are in the bondage of alcoholism. How many times we say, don't drink, this is so bad for you. Why are you again drinking? Come on, chop it. But nothing is happening. We took number of times to pota, tata, tabor and everywhere, but nothing is happening. Why? Why? We don't recognize it is Jesus who saves. Who saves? Jesus. Jesus. This man cannot save himself. He cannot save himself. Now, he is now in a situation, oh Jesus, help me at least. But still he is not able to get, come out. Why? The second reason is, what is he thinking about Jesus? The moment you think he is the only God, then only we really understand the content of our faith. Content of our faith. What is the definition of eternal life? Anybody else? What is the definition of eternal life? <laughs> Why nobody is answering? Okay, anybody else? 
Why only one person? You others can also answer. Okay. Good answer. Correct answer. The Lord bless you. And also you. Okay. Okay. What is eternal life? N knowing the true God and the one whom he sent. Where is it written? Is it written? John 17. Very good. Yes. Please read all of you. Please take and read. John chapter 17, 3. John chapter 17, 3. Increase this the is of eternal that life that they should know you. This is eternal life that they should know you. The only true God. The only true God. And the one whom you and sent. And the one whom you sent. You sent. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, knowing. Huh? Knowing the only true God, knowing the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. Knowing. This knowing is eternal life. What is the meaning of knowing? Do you know me? Do you know me? Some of you, at least. Eh? Yes? Yes? Do you know me? Yes. So you have some knowledge about me. Now you ask my wife. She's there. Hello. Do you know me? <laughs> so what is the difference? Is there a difference? Is there a difference? Yes. It is not better. It is something much. My int it is it is a it is it is, it is becoming one, knowing that knowing becomes so much that we become one. Can anybody separate us? Can anybody separate us? Nobody can separate us. Unseparately. No one can separate us. Now, this is a definition of knowing, you know. Knowing Christ, knowing God means it's like a spousal relationship, like a bride and bridegroom. So always Bible have this theme, God, God and man is like a bride and bridegroom. God is the bridegroom, our soul is the bride. It is to understand so much God loves us that he is in, already in union with us. Who can separate this love of God? Who can separate this? Can, can the sin separate this union? Can the devil separate this union? Okay, who is devil? We are talking about God. Now let us also think about devil. Who is devil? Very often people think, as I said earlier, even to the prayer group leaders, say, don't go to that house, okay? There is a lot of darkness and devil, eh? don't go there. Then somebody says, yes, devil is also spirit. Holy spirit and evil spirit, both are spirit, so they are almost equal. So be careful. Devil is very powerful. Be careful. When... Whenever we understand, say about this, many people do not understand what is the difference between the devil and God. What is the difference between Holy Spirit and evil spirit? How the evil spirits became? Now we already declared or proclaimed God is the creator of Heaven and earth means all invisible and visible. God has created visible things. And God also has created many invisible things. As an example, spirits, angels, there are 
Many invisible creatures are around us. We cannot see them. Are you here? Yes, yes, they are here. Yeah. Many angels are here. I can see, see, behind every one of you there are angels. <laughs> guardian angels, our guardian angels. What is he doing? Fair from the came. So they are created by God. So, some of these angels filled with the pride and wanted to become, take the position of God and they were thrown out. So they are the evil spirit. So they are known as fallen angels. So what, what is their nature? Their nature is spirit. And are they who created them? God. Originally, God has created them. Of course, their origin is from, the, from God. God has created them. So now, see the big difference. God is a creator spirit. And the evil spirits are? Creature spirit. <laughs> you said, okay. They, see the difference. You got the difference? God is creator spirit and the evil spirits are spirits but they are creation. Please understand this difference. This is the point you have to catch. Now you understand the difference. <laughs> so, God the creator spirit is infinite whereas the evil spirits are finite. Finite. And we are that infinite God, the creator spirit is in us. Then if you believe, if you strongly believe that God, the creator is within us and he is infinitely powerful, then our attitude will be totally different. I used to always tell my, an example when I was in a parish in Germany where I was invited to conduct a retreat. So by the time I reached, it was a little late night. All the rooms the people have taken, only one room was left there. The priest said, Thomas, I am very sorry. Everybody took the rooms. Now this one room only is left. But that is a very dangerous room. Maybe I will take a room outside in a hotel. I said, what is the danger in that room? He said, at 2 o'clock night, an evil spirit come there. So everybody run away. At 2 o'clock, they run out of the room. I don't know what to do. <laughs> now that is the only room left for me. I said, I know what to do. I will sleep in that room and today is the end of that devil. Hallelujah. Because I am a Christian. God dwells in me. Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Lord, the almighty power is in us. Why should I be afraid of the devil? There may be 10,000 of them around me. I said, this side, eh? not that side. But I am not to be afraid. Because God is in me. The devil, let, devil will say, I see, look, a Christian is going. Come on, we go away from this place. That should, that is the, that should, that must be the situation. So we have to have a clear understanding. Who am I? You are a child of God. You are carrying Christ. A Christian is a carrier of Christ. The devil should be afraid of you. The devil should be afraid of you. Let us go away from here. A Christian is coming. That is the situation. That must be the situation. If you believe in the truth. If you believe the content of the faith. So, I remember once... 
in a retreat one person was crying brother i wanted to get healing wherever i went all the people got a message you are healed you are healed but actually i am not healed now what to do you also pray for me okay i will also pray for you but then when i prayed i got a message i said the lord is telling that you do not believe in him <laughs> i am a catholic from childhood onwards i am going to church i go every sunday for holy mass yeah but what do you think about jesus christ yes jesus christ is the god of christians ha uh ha -huh. that is your understanding that's why you don't receive healing <laughs> so you do not know the truth see healing and holiness is actually together it is the holiness which at first begins when the holiness take place in us god's supernatural power the creative power flow in us so the healing take place it is the first is holiness through holiness all the blocks for god's power working in us will be removed then automatically healing take place so don't focus on healing focus on holiness but for holiness you must know the truth you must know the full truth of jesus who is jesus what is his mission is he a god of only christians so that is the answer i gave you already he is the beginning of the whole human race the complete human race today there may be whatever religion we say but the entire human race began from jesus because he is the only god he is the creator god and all what he created he will not allow to lose it that is the salvation plan he will not allow to lose it he will he has died for us to save us from all sinfulness he has already done it so he died for whom he died for whom he died on the cross he was hanged on the tree for for what for whom for christians how many christians were there when jesus died on the cross how many christians were there when jesus died on the cross were there any christians nobody was there then for whom he died for the whole human race you have to believe this and and at this moment when i explained this complete truth when she when he accepted this complete truth he started sweating sweating he started shivering and i could see such a powerful anointing taking place in his life i am sure that is the moment of salvation that is a moment of healing we have a, we have attended many charismatic retreats but it is a step by step growth but it is important we know more and more about christ you know this is something which st paul's letters repeatedly speaking to us st paul repeatedly speak to us this word knowledge knowledge of christ which is beyond our understanding it is beyond our understanding yes it is not necessary everything we will understand mother mary was along with jesus the child 12 years old in the and she left three days after she found jesus uh -huh. and she could not believe this boy is in such a great dialogue with such scripture scholars and everybody astounded at his knowledge and wisdom and this child of 12 years said to his mother why were you searching me why are you afraid why were you worried don't you know that i must be busy with my father's work these are all we know but i want to speak something after that what is written after that 
What is written after that? Mary kept. Uh, something before that. This is. Mary kept everything in her heart is further after. Something before it is written. She did not understand. But they did not understand what he said to them. They did not understand what the child said to Mary. Huh? So Mary also have the problem of not understanding. What have you to learn from that? Mary did not understand. But she kept everything in the heart. <laughs> so this is called direct downloading without opening the files. You can download from the website something, download it, don't open it. It says no, it cannot be opened without the such and such software, but you can download it. Once it is downloaded, then it can start working in us and give us an understanding. Everything you cannot understand. Everything you cannot understand.